Hello, thank you for joining me in my study. When Jan and I were at the conference at Trinity last month, Robbie Griggs from Covenant Seminary shared with me about the work of his colleague Jay Sklar in Old Testament studies on sacrifice and sin and atonement in the Old Testament. And he sent me a number of articles by Sklar, which I've been reading this week. Sklar differentiates three categories of sin in the Old Testament. First, there are unintentional sins, where a person unknowingly commits a wrong. And the remedy for this type of sin was confession and then offering a sacrifice in the temple or earlier the tabernacle. The second category of sin is sins which are intentional, but they are not sins of apostasy. These are sins which are willingly and intentionally undergone, but they don't involve blasphemy against God or rebellion against God. And the remedy for this type of sin was also confession and then a sacrifice in the tabernacle or temple. The third category of sin, however, was what was called sin committed with a high hand, high-handed sin. This was intentional sin of apostasy, rebellion against God. And interestingly enough, there was no remedy for this kind of high-handed sin in the sacrificial system. There was no sacrifice that a person could offer to atone for this kind of sin. Instead, this person was to be cut off from the people. He was to be excommunicated from the community um, because of his high-handed sin. Now that doesn't mean that sin committed with a high hand could not be forgiven by God. There are certain narratives in the Old Testament which show that this type of sin could be pardoned if there was a mediator who would intercede for the sinner. For example, Moses could go before God and intercede on behalf of the people who had rebelled against God, and God would pardon their sin. But there was no sacrifice that would atone for this kind of sin. Now this is very interesting because, of course, when we look back from the Christian perspective, the sacrificial death of Christ atones for all sorts of sin, no matter how serious. This seems to underline the fact that these Old Testament animal sacrifices didn't really serve to expiate sin and guilt. Rather, God gave them to the people as a sort of way of saying, if you will do these things, then you can be assured of my forgiveness. But it's not as though these animal sacrifices had an automatic effect of removing people's guilt or sin. That came from a divine pardon. And it's also interesting that in the case of God's pardoning sins committed with a high hand, there could still be disastrous consequences that it would ensue. Even though the sin was pardoned, the people still, for example, might not be permitted to enter into the promised land, or they might be um, denied other privileges that they would have had otherwise. Their sin was pardoned, but the negative consequences of that sin could still persist. So in these uh, animal sacrifices in the Old Testament, we see a marked contrast, I think, as well as a similarity with the sacrifice of Christ. These animal sacrifices were only good for sins which were not committed with a high hand, that is to say sins of rebellion against God. Um, for that, you needed a mediator who would intercede for you um, before God to receive his pardon. And that is exactly what Christ has done for us. Christ is both the all-sufficient sacrifice and our mediator before God, by which we are pardoned all our sins.